Hi, welcome to a special edition of Education Matters. Today we'll be looking uh, at the district of Cliffside Park, uh, specifically Cliffside Park High School. They put out a book called The Class of COVID-19. Uh, it's a collection of uh, student memoirs from uh, uh, the pandemic. And I think it's very well written. So we're gonna talk to the teacher, uh, the principal, and two of the students to find out uh, about this experience. Um, with me for the, uh, the two faculty members is I uh, have Sean Adler, who's the teacher who uh, started this. And then we also have the principal, Larry Pinto, who had a, put a lot of this into motion when Sean Adler came up with this great idea or his staff came up, you know, it was a, uh, a collaborative effort at the school. So Mr. Adler, just talk about how this project came about, uh, what, what class it is and what you teach. Yeah. Hi. Good afternoon. Thank, uh, thank you for 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 having us. Um, it's wonderful to talk about the book. Uh, so we've written now three editions of the class of COVID nineteen, and when you talk about the original edition and how we came up with the idea, I think it was a lot of disparate things happening at once, and a lot of things that sort of led to the development of the creation of the book. Um, first of all, we went on remote learning on March third. That was our last day at the school in person last year. Um, I celebrate a kind of weird anniversary on March 21st. Uh, and it only occurs to me because it just happened uh, the other day. That's the day my mother died when I was a senior in high school. And so I remember thinking I had lost my senior year too. And I remember thinking that those feelings of grief, those feelings of not knowing where to turn to and those feelings of having those emotions bottled up needed to be expressed. So we were talking a lot about emotions in our English composition class. We were talking a lot about grief. Um, I also teach psychology. We had done a whole week on grief in psychology. And so first and foremost, I think it started as a, as a sharing. It started as a way to be emotional and be vulnerable. And then as it grew and as I started to hear more and more of these stories, I really had the thought that there needed to be a record of this and there needed to be a place for these students to share these stories and share these narratives with the world. They were powerful. They were uh, important. They were necessary. And the more I, I heard them, the more I thought that they should be shared with as many people as possible. And I think... Um, there needed to be a record of not just the injustice that was done, but that there needed to be a record that there's good. There needed to be a record that there is hope uh, and there needed to be a record that, uh, that, that all the experiences, good and bad, could exist uh, in one place. So I brought it to my class. Um, Winnie and Narig were not in my class at that time, uh, but um, I brought it to them and they were excited. They were uh, eager. They were enthusiastic. We had 49 kids in the composition class I taught last year and all 49 participated, which is outstanding, particularly given that they were seniors and they were on remote learning. So to get that kind of, uh, um, to get that kind of collaboration and that kind of buy-in, I think was, uh, was a significant reminder that we were on the right step. We were on the right path. I will say the stories are powerful, uh, I, you know, and uh, I can really relate to a lot of them. Uh, and you almost forget what it was like last May in, in uh, our, you know, in the northeast corner of New Jersey. So, Larry, you're the principal, teacher comes to you with a great idea. There's a lot of paperwork and there's a lot of things that you have to do to, to make this happen. It's not just it's not a simple thing. You have to go to the board and the, the superintendent and get releases. So. What was your reaction? Usually when I get ideas from the staff or the students, uh, you know, a lot of times it's, well, how do we make it happen? And in the case of Mr. Adler bringing this to our attention, it was, well, you know, this is, this is really new. Like we've never done anything close to this. I'm not familiar with anybody doing anything like this. So how are we going to make this happen? And the first call really was to the, the board attorney, uh, quite honestly, because, you know, we have, Although many of them are adults, uh, they're they're you know they're not emancipated. They're uh, they're they're you know this is 
is the school property, you know, there's a lot of questions. So it's to the board attorney, get the guidance regarding uh, appropriate uh, disclosures and, and releases. And uh, then it was, you know, a, a number of steps that quite honestly, Mr. Adler had already gone ahead and, uh, uh, and, and, and done, you know, he had the students had already you know, kind of produced the work. Um, he had already kind of introduced the publication to them and he was ready to kind of just to sell the book and, and put it on Amazon. And, uh, you know, that's when we kind of said, Hey, let's make sure we do this within the bounds of the law. The board's aware. Uh, so we made sure we got all board approval. We got all the uh, releases. We provided all the students with copies of the books. Uh, we worked initially with the PTSO to get it on their website. And then we were able to, uh, we were able to, uh, put it on the school Amazon account. So it's now linked to the school Amazon account. And, uh, like we said, it's, you know, it's a, it's a tremendous boon for the school. It's a, you know, it's just, it's, it's not tremendous revenue, but it's a revenue for the students. It's going to benefit the students. So it's absolutely uh, a wonderful idea and, you know, very excited to find out that there was a, uh, that there was, you know, additional additions and, uh, you know, I, that was student driven. So it's Mr. Adler will talk more about that. And, you know, there is discussion of a um, uh, another collaboration uh, project with our high school and a very prestigious university. Um, and, you know, we've kind of, Mr. Adler and myself and the supervision has, we've discussed this a little bit and we've kind of slowed it back a little bit and let the kids kind of enjoy this success um, before we kind of dive into uh, the, uh, uh, the, the next project. Uh, and we're excited about the next project also. Uh, Mr. Adler, uh, I was taken back. The writing is very good, and they all use different styles, um, which I'm glad. I'm sure you're, you know, as your English teacher, you're probably pretty happy about. Uh, so they use good styles, different styles, but they all got their message out. So how did you move from, you know, you did a great job. You got the, you figured out how to publish it. Now you have to go to the next class and say, how do we top this? Uh, and but were the students eager to? follow up on this, the new students? Yeah, I, <clears throat> first of all, it was never a question of, of topping it. Um, I knew that given the length of the pandemic, given the fact that we had written the first stories in April uh, and that the new stories would be coming in in October and uh, November and December, that they would be by virtue of the fact that they were six months later, very different. You know, if you look at the stories in the first edition, they're very centered around lost things. They're very centered around um, fear. They're very centered around prom, graduation, summer, things that they were missing out on, boyfriends, girlfriends. Um, by the second edition, it had become almost like a groundhog day for a lot of us. And I think you sense that in the stories. It becomes monotonous. It becomes, um, Juliana Baldwin wrote about it being like a roller coaster that you never get over the hump of where you're just going up and up and up and up and up and up and you never really feel like you get to go and uh, get that downward uh, spiral. Narig, uh, bless him, Narig wrote about looking for God in this world. Where is God when it's a six month, seven month, eight month pandemic? So I think there was a, we knew right away that there would be a different flavor of stories. Um, so I don't know if it was ever about topping the story so much as, as sharing from outbreak to vaccine, this whole process of uh, the course of the pandemic. As far as, you know, the style of the stories, I told the kids when we would talk, because there's hundreds of hours uh, involved, uh, you know, and Winnie and Nara can speak to all the times we would conference um, individually and, and go over that. So, but that goes to, that credit goes to them. I, you know, I mean, that credit goes to, to their brilliance and their ideas and and, you know, if I was able to, to shepherd it and shape it, then, then that was a small role in the creation of it. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't writing it. So it, it ultimately came from, from their insights and their, um, their experiences. I have to say that I thought the experiences, and I'm going to get to the students, uh, they uh, were very mature and thoughtful in, their, in all the writing. It was a very insightful, I thought, when I read their student experiences. Besides the good writing, I, I think they were really, uh, their insights uh, were, were spot on in a lot of instances, in all instances. 
Yeah, I, you know, one of the things we talked about and we did it asynchronously with the with the second group. So I made videos and I posted the videos online. And, and one of the things we talked about is that, you know, life isn't about what happens to you. It's not you can't write a story that says I walked outside and got hit by a car. You have to write the story about how you're the hero, how you're making choices, how you choose um, to give up or to give in. And, and so I love that all the stories are so centered on that, on centered on that choice and centered on that change. And it's not just about what happens to you. Um, the other thing we talked about a lot with the kids was, was, you know, someone somewhere is going to write the history of COVID, right? And it's going to be 1500 pages. And it's going to include interviews with Donald Trump and Dr. Fauci and Joe Biden. And I mean, everyone's going to be involved. That's not this book. This book is your feelings, your stories, your experiences. So, you know, we don't need the story of COVID per se, as it relates to the virus itself. We need the story of you. And so I think when you give people the permission to do that, and it's not a research paper, it's not a, um, it, you know, it's not an expositional writing, it's a piece of narrative, and you say, center yourself, um, I think when the kids do that, it becomes, it, it's brilliant. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, I'm going to go to the two students here for a moment. Winnie, I'm going to start with you. Um, you talked about having COVID and uh, reflecting back on that experience. Uh, was that a hard decision or did you say, well, I'm, I know what I'm writing about? So in the beginning, I felt very reluctant to write about my own experience. But at the same time, I think we've lost the sense of human connection. So I really wanted to focus on being able to share my story and my vulnerability so others can relate to it. Now, um, full disclosure, I had COVID too. And so I can relate to a lot of what you wrote about. And one of the things that you wrote about was you felt kind of weak. You, you use that, I am weak. And you also... Uh, you kind of like you have a scarlet letter that you, you, you're identified by this. Uh, was that something you really truly felt that it was like, just, you felt bad about having COVID? Definitely. I think um, my mom, she was there for me. So I think it was important that I had to say it because, you know, I felt like I was just there making everything harder for her. So you know, that was my focus. I wanted to um, make it so that um, Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nereg, uh, you uh, and uh, Mr. Adler talked about it, reflected on it, that you talked about your faith and finding, uh, and, and your heritage, that you felt like you were losing your heritage because you couldn't go to your uh, Armenian church. Could you explain why you picked that and how that was such a big influence on you? Um, well, uh, the months before the pandemic, there was going like there was a lot of change that was going on at my church. Like we we have had a, a new priest, a new board. So things were looking very bright for the future. So uh, I wanted to be part of that future. And I was looking forward to being a teacher in the Saturday school in the Sunday school and like, uh, and, and to be an uh, acolyte on the altar too. And, and like there were dates set for all of this to happen. But as the uh, pandemic happened, like it all got pushed back and like no one was sure of like what was gonna happen, you know? And I, and I couldn't go back to church every Sunday and I couldn't like be in sync with my friends and my uh, uh, relatives who shared the culture too. You know, like I couldn't go over to my friends' houses either. So I, so like I found myself like kind of speaking the language less, like uh, having to apply it less and less, like in my uh, everyday life. So I felt that the pandemic had affected like my way of life in a in a way. And it tested your faith. Yeah, it it did really because um like you read in the Bible that like God had sent like these like horrible things to happen, but then there were these people like these prophets and these like figures who prayed to God and they had faith and everything kind of turned turned out fine for them, you know. But in a world that, in my opinion, is kind of straying like far far farther and farther from God, I found myself kind of lost like what's going to be the outcome of this? You know what I mean? Like if these 
people who are strong in their faith stop going to church? Is it going to be the same like af after everything goes back to normal? So I, I was like, I myself was kind of questioning that. So I, I just like found myself just like reading the Bible more and trying to find of like found like find some sort of guidance in my uh, spiritual life, which was lost. Okay, Winnie, I'll go back to you. Uh, it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to do a writing assignment and start writing about your experiences and your feelings. Did you find it gave you better insights into your, what you were thinking as you were writing as opposed to just talking about it? Um, can you repeat the question? Okay. Did you, when you were writing the, the um, uh, this is a writing assignment. So when you're writing about your experiences and your feelings, did you feel that that gave you a little bit different insights into it as opposed to just talking about it with a, a family or friend? I think it, this writing, this project, so it was going to be public. So I knew I really wanted it to relate to every, like for those who had COVID and so rather than just seeing it as a regular school assignment, I wanted to put my thoughts and true feelings into it and express and openly um, convey what I was experiencing for others. So I think that was what it was. Well, you did do that. Uh, Nereg, what about you? The writing experience, was that uh, therapeutic almost to a certain extent to be putting your thoughts down on paper? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh in my opinion, it kind of felt like the words were just like coming from like, like straight, straight from my heart, because I, because I've had these thoughts just like racing in my mind. And it was really easy to get it on a piece of paper. And it almost felt good to have this like sort of weight just like lifted off off my chest and off my sh shoulders. Well, that's Mr. Adler, that's what uh, uh, the teacher wants to hear. When they're I was I was smiling and nodding my head. I don't know if anyone could see me because I wasn't on the screen. But yeah, that's it, it, it warms my heart. You know, we've 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 gotten tremendous feedback from some of the students that say it really helped them with their uh, you know emotional health. And knowing that would be enough. That would have that would have justified everything in and of itself. So just understanding that it's been you know we have we have stories in in the book in both books about depression. We have stories in both books about anxiety. Um, we have stories about <clears throat> real mental health issues and knowing that it contributed in a way to make the students feel better. I, I think, yeah, when you say it's all a teacher wants to hear, I, I, I can't help but agree with everything. I, I just, I love that. I love hearing it. So um, thank you, Narek. Yes. Um, can I just say too, by the way, Narek talked about his uh, Christian faith, and I love that he wrote about that in the book. Um, I love that of the 24 stories in the second edition, we have a story about uh, 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 Armenian church. We have a story that quotes the Quran um, and talks about the um, festival of the sacrifice. And we have a story uh, Alina Coro wrote about, uh, she took on Marcus Aurelius, and she talks about Stoicism and why Stoicism doesn't work and isn't a good philosophy. And I love like how fortunate we are at Cliffside Park and how lucky we are to how lucky I am as a teacher to be here where there's all of these experiences. And I love that we were able to capture so many of those experiences in this book. Uh, Larry, Mr. Pinto. So um, you, you, I mean, you, you weren't there at the very beginning in terms of the class writing, but when you were received the, the writing in the, in the super, in the administration, the board received the writing, let alone was, you know, you had to deal with all the legal issues. Were, was everyone like impressed with the work? Uh, absolutely. The, the level of writing from the initial group and the level of writing from the, the second group, uh, not only the different styles, but the, the, the second group of students, you know, this was an assignment for them. Uh, I'm correct on that. I think this was student driven. They reached out to Mr. Adler and we're like, we want to do this. So, you know, the, the, the level of, of, of writing, um, you know, is, I don't want to say improve, but the students, you know, you asked us, you know, you asked Mr. Adler, how, did, how could he top that? And that was never part of Mr. Adler's goal. I think the students themselves uh, that elected to do this, they, they wanted to, to, to write something meaningful and special and powerful. 
And you know, you can see that. And Mr. Adler spoke to the, the the change in tone of the writing. And you know, I think you see that in how the students wrote and the the metaphors that they 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 drew upon and the analogies they made. Um, so, you know, I I'm beyond impressed uh, with not just the level of writing, but also the level of emotion that both groups of students, you know, drew from and drew upon. And, you know, we've talked about this uh, before, you know, this era of, of education, remote instruction, you know, this, you know, students are not receiving the services or traditional services. They're not receiving them the way they normally would. They're not receiving that social interaction. They're not receiving that opportunity to, to you know, discuss with their teachers in, in, a, in a personal setting where normally you'd gravitate after class and, and talk to them. And these opportunities, this opportunity in particular, speaks to so many of, of that social emotional component because you have a, an individual, an adult individual, you know, investing their time in students when students feel that they're not being invested in or feel that they don't have that opportunity. Um, they're, 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 you know, expressing their emotions, which have been pent up and repressed in, you know, in a room or in a house, you know, to themselves. You know, I think Winnie kind of speaks to that in her story, um, her emotions, how she felt. And, you know, this is an opportunity for them to, to, to get them down on paper. Cause let's be honest, high school kids, you're not going to go, they're not going to go tell their parents how they're feeling, that they're upset, that they're distraught. No, not most high school kids. So this was an opportunity for them to kind of, you know, have this weight come off their shoulders. And, you know, this is tremendous activity. Uh, and, it, and, it's, and, it, and the reality is, it's just, it's, it's good instruction. It's good instruction. That is normal instruction, but it, it was kind of difficult to do in a remote setting, but we were, Mr. Adler was very proactive, developed the tool or, or found the tools that he needed to make it happen and allowed for the conferencing, you know, allowed for that, that the editing that the students needed. And, and, um, you know, as much credit as he deflects to the students, he's respond, he sh he's very deserving of a lot of this credit also, because he came up with the idea, you know, put the steps in place, talked it up amongst the kids so much so that the second group, you know, they, 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 it was student led. They, they want it turned into like a club or, or like another class for Mr. Adler. Like it was not one of his teaching responsibilities. And we're thankful to him and thankful for the students for, for uh, really, you know, finding the need to do that. So. Okay. Well, uh, Winnie, uh, and I'll go to uh, Nehru later. Um, uh, was it, did all the students really want to do this? And why did you really want to do this as, a, from your perspective as a student, to do this writing? Right. So like Narek said, it was very much so a therapeutic process and being able to write it down and let it out in some way. So I think that was the main reason why I wanted to do it as well. And what did your mother say when she read it? Um, honestly, I thought she was pretty emotional. She was like, I didn't, she didn't know that's how I felt. So I should have probably told her first about it. But I mean, I guess she read it through from the book. And she got to understand more about me during the time because I'm not very an open, I'm not very open. So her reading the book, I guess she understood more of me. It's easier to put it down on paper than tell someone face to face. Right. Mm -hmm. I understand that one. Uh, so Nairig, what about you? Uh, why do you think the, all the students wanted to do it? And then I'm going to ask you, follow up when your parents saw it or you, whoever you gave it to in your family, what were their thoughts? Well, like uh, when he said, it really was some like extremely therapeutic to write. And also I thought it would be good to do because I wanted to challenge my writing like uh, abilities because be since we were in the pandemic, like we didn't have the same level of challenges because it's like, it's difficult, you know? So when I saw this uh, opportunity, I wanted to take it not only to express my emotions, but to challenge myself as a, as a writer. And when I did show, show my parents, like I believe that my hard work did pay off because they were extremely emotional. Like they, they were in tears and, and like, I was like frozen. I was like, what happened, you know? And, and then they're like, oh, I'm so proud. And then I, I, I just felt weird, but it kind of like 
gave me a sigh of relief to know that they felt that way. Mm -hmm. And do you think they got to know you a little bit better just by reading that even, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Of, of, of course, because like, like you were saying, it is much easier to write some, to like to write your thoughts down than instead of saying it out loud, especially to your parents, because that's not like very easy. Okay. Uh, Mr. Adler, we're going to be wrapping up. Uh, one of the, hardest things for teachers sometimes is getting the students motivated. Well, that seems to be something that we've accomplished pretty easily here for you. Um, uh, so what's the, the next steps? And were you glad to hear what their, their families thought about their writing, how it touched them too? Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, 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 all right. So there's a couple of things here at play. First of all, um, I was, very good at, at some of the big ideas, um, but I was very nervous, and particularly with regards to the reception from the parents. Um, so when I hear from a parent, when a parent emails me, or even when a kid relays uh, what their parents have said, I, it really does. Uh, it makes me so glad and 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 almost relieved in a way. In the first book, we had a story. Our second story in the book, Christian Cruz wrote about his his father's relapse. And I was very nervous uh, about that uh, up until his father came and gave me a hug at graduation uh, and said that the fact that he had read the story had helped him realize what was happening and was inspiring him to come back. Um, and the more I hear from that, uh, from parents who say that it's helping their children. And by the way, Winnie's story about not telling her mom, but being able to write it down is very common. And so it, yeah, of course, of course, it makes me thrilled. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I feel fortunate that I get to experience that kind of gratitude um, because it's, it's how I feel. I feel grateful to them, you know, and that's why I started with the story about my mom too. Like it, 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 it's helped me, um, you know, sharing and talking and conferencing and, and working with these stories as much as we worked with these stories, it's been cathartic for me. So, you know, I'm just as grateful and just as lucky as everyone else. And I'll say this too, Mr. Pinto is very complimentary, but you know, none of this happens without the support from the entire staff and, and particularly Mr. Pinto. And there are some supervisors who deserve mentioning Mr. Janucci, Ms. Van Fleet, because, you know, I'm new to this school. Uh, this is my third year here. So last year I was here a year and then we had the pandemic and none of this is ha none of this happens if they hadn't encouraged an environment of vulnerability and compassion where the students of Cliffside Park, I got them as seniors. They had been prepped for this for a long time by good people and good teachers. So right off the bat. And then as Mr. Pinto says, I'm, I'm not good sometimes at some of the legal stuff and some of the releases and, and other that. So, you know, thank, thank goodness for him. And really a lot of credit goes to so many people uh, at the community. Okay. Mr. Pindal, you, you have the final word. Um, you have to be proud of your staff and your students as a principal, uh, you know, that has to make you, your heart feel good about this, taking a, a really very difficult time and, you know, bring out the best in everyone. Absolutely. As a community, uh, we were one of the, we were really, we were hit very hard. Uh, May 30, uh, March 30th, uh, two weeks into the pandemic, uh, we lost uh, Mr. Ben, Coach Ben Luter. Uh, you know, and he was, he was 30 years old. He's a very young man. Nobody thought COVID affected young people. Um, you know, students wrote about the baseball practice and, you know, feeling that they might be the reason that Coach Luter got this. And, and, so the, the fact that, you know, our community was hit so hard on the national stage right away, uh, the, the rate of uh, positivity in the community was very high. Um, the, you know, to see these students respond in the way that they did, I, I couldn't be more grateful. I couldn't be happier for them. To see their recognition, uh, it it's truly speaks uh, to how hard they worked and what they did, what they've actually accomplished. I mean, CNN, NBC, you know, Wall Street Journal, People Magazine, you know, it, it, great for them. I'm so proud of them. 
so proud of them for for their newfound success. So proud of them for their ability to share, you know, their their vulnerability, vulnerabilities, their emotions, their 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 distress, uh, their success even throughout the pandemic. So, yeah, no, very proud of them. And and again, thank you to Mr. Adler, thank you to Ms. Van Vliet, Mr. Janucci, and everybody else who played a significant role uh, in this because it doesn't happen without the students, without you know, the instructors involved, the supervisors involved, and, and just very proud and really can't say anything more than thank you guys for, for doing something so great for our community. Okay, that brings us to the end of this Education Matters. I'm going to put the book up again. There's three editions. Get all three. It's a great read. Uh, and plus, uh, the profits go to the students. So uh, this is something that uh, I think you should invest. And even if you don't live in New Jersey, in in fact, if you don't live in New Jersey, it's even more important for you to figure out what it was like in the northeast corner of uh, New Jersey during the, the pandemics, particularly when it was like uh, new. But even so, uh, go out and get the book now.